I do want to thank um, Nishi Brunskaya, I want to thank Lift Fund, some representatives are here for the work they do in, in supporting businesses, individuals throughout the community, throughout the region and the state, and they've done this for a very long time. Um, and, and what we're going to talk about today is related to this, related to supporting our businesses, to supporting our economy. Thanks to the American Rescue Plan, we have a, a once in a generation opportunity to leverage funds, significant amounts of funds, almost a billion dollars that arrived in Harris County to make the county stronger, to make the county healthier, to make the county more resilient from an economic standpoint. And we've begun receiving some of these funds. In May, uh, we, we received a first tranche of the $915 million that have been allocated to Harris County. And we intend to put those funds to work. In fact, we already are. We adopted priorities for the use of those funds in Harris County. And the focus is to improve health, to address housing, and to add savings and jobs in our community. Of course, in addition to uh, targeting the COVID challenges that our region continues to bring. Today's news focuses on the jobs portion of this uh, priority list. Running a small business is a huge challenge, even during the good times. The personal sacrifices that uh, small business owners make day in and day out for their community are huge, and we owe it to them to support them as they make it through the COVID crisis and the associated economic challenges. During COVID, it's been Done, downright impossible to face some of these challenges. The unfortunate reality is in Harris County, small business revenue is down 38% since last January. That is according to a small business survey conducted by the U.S. Census. So today we're announcing a proposal that will be a lifeline for thousands of local businesses across Harris County. We want more than mere survival for these entrepreneurs. We want them to thrive, we want them to expand, and we want to solidify Harris County's reputation as an incubator for small business innovation. The Harris County Small Business Recovery Fund, which we are announcing today, proposing at the Harris County Commissioner's Court, is a proposal for $30 million in grants for micro businesses and small businesses that will help up to 2,000 businesses with grants ranging from $5,000 to $25,000. If approved at Commissioner's Court, and I hope my colleagues will support me in this, the funds will be available to small businesses for things they need, um, not just to survive, but to grow, to thrive. Think paying workers, paying suppliers, paying the mortgage uh, or rent for their businesses. Today would be just the first step to establishing these f this fund. The application window would open September 20th, um, and, so, and it would go on for a few weeks. So part of the reason for announcing today is if you are a small business, put that date on your calendar and spread the word September 20th because these funds will be available soon. Here's how new here's how the businesses will be selected for grants. On August 20th, the county will launch a website with information about how to apply, with frequently asked questions, with other information, information that all the details will be available in multiple languages, of course. Then there will be an application period, September 20th through August 4th. Among all the applicants, we will select uh, certain businesses. The selection will be randomized, but based on need, something that we've seen work throughout our COVID efforts. So applicants will be assigned a score with a focus, a priority for businesses and business owners in vulnerable areas for minority and women-owned businesses and other designated priority categories. Commissioner Garcia, thank you for joining us this morning. And so we'll provide additional updates in the coming weeks 
uh, if, if, if a court approves this. And I'm very proud of this program. I'm very grateful, Commissioner Garcia, from the very beginning of the pandemic, uh, you instituted the very first program, the loan program and the grant program for small businesses is very successful. And so this is uh, really an issue that I know you have been leading on for a long time. Um, and, but so I wanna highlight before I close here, two especially innovative aspects of this program. First is equity. When applicants are chosen, uh, this isn't something where, you know, we divide up the funds and the, anyone who has a friend downtown gets, gets the grant, no. This is administered by an independent entity and is assigned according to a, a scoring system that is very transparent and a randomized system. So we're prioritizing uh, businesses in areas that have, hit, have been hit particularly hard by COVID that have a low social vulnerability index. That's an index assigned by the CDC. These businesses tend to be smaller, tend to be more vulnerable, um, and we prioritize other businesses that are just in a more vulnerable, vulnerable situation. Second, we know the relief funds are only as strong as the partners we have to administer them. We've seen that throughout our COVID relief programs. And, and so this fund um, is unique because we're partnering with Lyft Fund. It's a community uh, focused lender, a nonprofit with a national reputation, with national long time experience in supporting entrepreneurs. And they will not only help in administering the program, but they will help businesses in applying. We will have a, a network of navigators that will support small businesses that will get the word out. This network of navigators is what has made our rental assistance program a model for the nation. And that's why we had the Deputy Treasury Secretary here just a few weeks ago touting a program, uh, telling other jurisdictions, you know, you need to do what Houston, Harris County are doing rental assistance. We're taking those same lessons and applying them to our small business fund. So I, I'm very, very proud. I hope we can pass this program today. And I wanna make sure all the small businesses in our community, if as long as you're located within Harris County and you're small business, um, you know, be ready for the application period that opens September, September 20th. Small businesses in Harris County have had our back during our pandemic. They've, they've had our back and all year long for almost two years at this point they've had the backs of the employees they've been through extremely tough times and it is time for us to have their back too small businesses and the workers they employ are the engine of the local and the regional economy they make up who we are as a county and that is why they deserve our support just briefly let me repeat in spanish and then we'll hear from commissioner garcia Primero darle las gracias al comisionado, a la señora Bruns Clay, que está aquí representando al Leaf Fund. Y, y bueno, estoy muy orgullosa de anunciar este, esta propuesta que estamos trayendo a la Corte de Comisionados el día de hoy. Gracias a los fondos que hemos recibido por parte del gobierno federal para la recuperación eh, económica frente al virus, frente al COVID-19, el condado está recibiendo alrededor de mil millones de dólares. Recibimos la primera mitad de esos fondos, cuatro, o sea, alrededor de 450 millones en mayo y estamos poniendo esos fondos a, a trabajar. Hemos adoptado como corte de comisionados, como gobierno del condado, hemos adoptado tres, tres prioridades. Eh, el, la salud, obviamente, trabajos y también hogares, el que haya suficientes hogares para las personas. El día de hoy anunciamos una iniciativa enfocada en la porción de trabajos. Dirigir una pequeña empresa es un gran desafío, es un gran desafío, incluso en el mejor de los casos. Pero el COVID-19 ha hecho este reto de dirigir una pequeña empresa aún más grande, prácticamente imposible en muchos casos. Entonces, queremos apoyar a estos pequeños negocios. Los ingresos de las pequeñas empresas en el condado Harris han bajado un 38% desde el enero pasado, de acuerdo al censo de, de los Estados Unidos. Hoy estamos anunciando una propuesta que va a asegurar no solo la supervivencia de estos entre, eh, empresarios, emprendedores, sino que también va a apoyar a que estas pequeñas empresas eh, surjan, continúen creciendo y solidifiquen la reputación del condado Harris como una incubadora de innovación, como una fuente de trabajos, una fuente de una economía fuerte. 
el Fondo de Recuperación de Pequeñas Empresas, que les vamos a anunciar el día de hoy, consiste en 30 millones de dólares en subvenciones para pequeñas empresas y para microempresas, empresas especialmente pequeñas. Si se aprueba este programa el día de hoy, espero que mis colegas lo apoyen. Esos fondos estarán disponibles para las pequeñas empresas, todo lo que necesiten, para pagar los trabajadores, para pagar proveedores, para pagar la renta. El día de hoy sería solamente el primer paso. Estableceríamos el fondo y las aplicaciones abrirían el 20 de septiembre. Entonces, si usted es propietario de una pequeña empresa, marque esa fecha en el calendario, el 20 de septiembre. Así sele seleccionaríamos uh, a, a las personas que, eh, la, a las pequeñas empresas para recibir los fondos. El 20 de agosto el condado abre un, una, o, o lanzará una página web con información, con preguntas frecuentes, estará disponible en español, obviamente. Después habrá un periodo de aplicación que abre el 20 de septiembre, del 20 de septiembre al 4 de octubre. La selección será aleatoria pero basada en necesidad. ¿Qué significa eso? Que no se trata de quién tiene un amigo aquí en la Corte de Comisionados. Esto va a ser administrado por un grupo independiente y va a ser la selección al azar. Pero si es una empresa eh, donde los propietarios son minorías, son mujeres, es una empresa en un área del condado de bajos recursos, va a recibir un poco de prioridad, va a tener más, eh, más veces su nombre en esa selección aleatoria. Entonces, eh, así se va a basar el, el programa. Vamos a seleccionar alrededor de 2,000 empresas para estos 30 millones de dólares. Obviamente, si el programa funciona bien, lo más seguro es que invirtamos más fondos. Hay dos pedazos, dos piezas del programa que me enorgullecen en particular, que son únicos. Primero es la equidad. Cuando elegimos a las empresas, vamos a elegir a aquellas empresas que más necesitan estos fondos. Empresas en áreas con un alto índice de vulnerabilidad social, ese es un índice que asigna el gobierno federal, donde hay bajos recursos, donde son áreas vulnerables. Entonces, es área de, de equidad, de enfocarnos en las empresas más pequeñas. Segundo, es eh, el trabajo que estamos haciendo con los socios que nos van a ayudar a administrar este programa. Este grupo Leaf Fund eh, funciona como un banco, pero un banco sin ánimo de lucro. Entonces, apoyan a la comunidad con, con, con ayuda, con guía, con préstamos. Han venido haciendo esto por muchísimos años alrededor del país con mucho éxito. Entonces, vamos a trabajar con ellos y además del apoyo de esta entidad, también vamos a trabajar con eh, navegadores comunitarios. Navegantes, básicamente, son, son navegantes, lo que llamamos navegantes comunitarios y son eh, un, un grupo de individuos que van a apoyar, van a estar ahí al lado de estas pequeñas empresas ayudándolas a llevar, llenar la aplicación, informándolas del proceso, informándolas del programa. Eso es lo que ha llevado al éxito en nuestros programas de apoyo de renta, apoyo a los inquilinos y también a los propietarios de hogar. Entonces, vamos a hacer algo parecido con este programa de pequeñas empresas. Las pequeñas empresas en el condado Harris nos han apoyado mucho durante esta pandemia. Lo mínimo que podemos hacer es ayudarlos a recuperarse. Esas pequeñas empresas son el motor de nuestra economía local, el motor de nuestra economía regional y realmente son lo que hace este condado exitoso. Entonces merecen nuestro apoyo y espero que mis colegas apoyen este programa. Uh, we'll hear now from Commissioner Garcia and then from Ms. Uh, Bruns Clay, and we'll take some questions. Commissioner. Thank you, George. Thank you, Judge. Um, Commissioner uh, Adrian Garcia, Precinct 2. Let me simply say that um, we've always said that small businesses are the backbone of our economy. Well, if they're the backbone of our economy, then Harris County should have their back. And we have proven already early in the pandemic, as a judge alluded to, I had proposed the initial a small business loan program that was converted to a grant. And then the second small business grant program. And now we're on our third uh, endeavor to continue to support those uh, who employ uh, young people throughout our, our community. We're uh, today going to approve, I've, I know we're going to approve it, Judge, uh, that we're going to approve this program that uh, will support those who are living the dream. You know, I, I think back, and the reason why 
this grant and the previous efforts were important to me was because number one, I served on city council and I was a chair of the, the uh, Minority Women Business Enterprise uh, Council Committee. And I worked hard to ensure that the door was open for anyone uh, who wanted to do business, play by the rules and work hard and hopefully succeed and grow their business, uh, would have an opportunity. I, I did a lot of work in that regard. But the reality of this is that it goes back to my childhood, uh, having parents who did what they needed to do to, have, uh, to keep a roof over our head and food on the table. My father, a small business mechanic, um, had his own shop, built his own shop, uh, taught uh, my brothers and I a great deal about fixing things and fixing them right and fixing them right the first time. And so those experiences have stayed with me. And that's why this grant and these efforts uh, to support those who want to, you know, live the American dream and grow a business and support others. Uh, and to that point, I remember when people would walk through my dad's shop asking for a handout, but my dad would instead provide them a job and a place uh, to live and food to eat. And then those individuals went on to have their own successful uh, careers in the automotive industry. And so I'd simply you know, go back to that memory and that's why this is important to me. Because there's a lot of parents who are working out of their living rooms, who are working out of their garages, who have uh, you know, legitimate businesses, who are providing uh, an economy uh, throughout uh, Harris County and supporting many individuals. They're, they're supporting their children in, more, in all likelihood, but they're also hiring people from our community. And at this particular time, we need to ensure that we continue to keep them uh, in mind. You know, reflecting back on the previous programs that we've done, you know, be, making sure that this is focused on micro businesses uh, is important because, and Harris, rather, Harris County has already been hitting the mark. In the first programs, 88% of the businesses that we did give a grant to were already in this, in this arena. They had um, 10 employees or less. And then, uh, that actually 94%, 88% uh, percent of those were making less than a million dollars. And oh, more than 40% uh, had not received the previous federal uh, support programs. They had not gotten the, uh, the PPP or anything else. And so this goes to show that Harris County has not forgotten those who are important uh, to so many. And uh, they reflect so many businesses today that are way beyond this mark, but this is how, this is where they started. And so I'm, I'm very, very excited about this program. I want to make sure that it passes. And if we need to do it again, we will, uh, because this is how we're going to grow and strengthen our economy. Uh, and so with that, uh, I thank you, Judge, for your leadership, uh, but I also want to say a few words in Spanish. Este, tengo el gusto y el, el, el orgullo de estar aquí hoy esta mañana para es estar listo de aprobar esta, esta beca que le vamos a entregar a las empresas pequeñas alrededor del Condado Harris. En particular, quiero enfocar que uh, la razón por qué esto es importante a, a, a partir de mi experiencia como concejal, uh, cuando yo era este, el presidente de la Cámara, del comité más bien uh, de las empresas uh, pequeñas uh, en el concilio, en donde hice mucho trabajo para asegurar que las oportunidades y las puertas del gobierno estaban abiertas para todos y uh, que quieren la oportunidad de trabajar, eh, trabajar honestamente, trabajar duro, que tendrán la oportunidad. Pero también yo me recuerdo de mis padres. Mi papá tener, tenía un taller de mecánica donde yo y mis hermanos trabajaban y aprendimos mucho. Aprendimos cómo arreglar las cosas y arreglarlos bien y arreglarlos bien la primera vez. Y esas, este, esas este, lesiones uh, se han quedado conmigo y por eso esto es importante. Siempre hemos dicho que uh, las empresas pequeñas son este, la, la espalda de nuestra economía. Pues si son nuestra espalda de la economía, debemos respaldarlos a ellos igualmente. Entonces, por eso estamos aquí para apoyar a, a aquellos que tienen el sueño 
este, yo pienso también en la Cámara de Empresarios Latinos de Houston, que llegan a representar tantas empresas pequeñas, pero que tienen grandes sueños. Y yo quiero asegurar que esta pandemia no los va a prevenir a, este, a lograr esos sueños. Hay tantos este, negocios en nuestra uh, comunidad que comenzaron como las empresas pequeñas que vamos a apoyar. Empresas que tienen uh, cinco uh, empleados. Y esto es un ejemplo de lo que ya hemos hecho. Este, al principio de la pandemia yo apoyé el primer paquete para apoyar nuestras empresas pequeñas. Un programa de, uh, de un préstamo en que se convirtió a becas. Y entonces el segundo. Y hasta ahora estamos haciendo el tercer. Y si se tiene que hacer nuevamente, lo vamos a hacer. Pero yo quiero asegurar que todos que quieren este, mantener sus puertas abiertas, quieren crecer sus negocios, que por favor se arrimen, se informen y lleguen a participar en el proceso para recibir un apoyo que es exclusivamente para aquellos que están empleando las personas, los jóvenes alrededor de nuestras vecindades. Yo me acuerdo este, de tantos este, trabajos que yo, yo recibí cuando yo era joven y ese es, la, ese es el programa que este, estamos este, presentando hoy y, este, y con toda la seguridad, con la jueza Hidalgo, sabemos que vamos a pasar y aprobar este paquete. Así que gracias. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. On behalf of the Lift Fund's founding CEO and the entire Lift Fund organization, we consider it both an honor and a privilege to partner with Harris County to support small businesses on their journey to economic recovery. We'd like to thank Judge Adalgo and the county commissioners for their servant leadership and their partnership with this new program. Lift Fund was founded in 1994 to elevate underserved and overlooked and underestimated communities. We provide access to capital, technical assistance, resources, and tools to help small businesses build wealth through entrepreneurship. Since its inception, we've provided over 400 million in capital to those, in small, to those small businesses and micro businesses that have often been left out of the financial mainstream. This past year, over our, over our 15 state footprint, Lip Fund provided over $98 million in relief funding for small businesses. We like to help them cope with the impact of the pandemic. We witnessed firsthand them cope, particularly those communities of color. We witnessed them cope with the burdens of the pandemic. We witnessed their resiliency We witnessed them shoulder the burden of their disproportionate burdens exacerbated by the pandemic. We also witnessed them, their commitment to their communities and to their businesses. We can recognize that small businesses are the heartbeat of the economy. Therefore, Harris County and Lift Fund are committed to casting both a broad and deep net to make sure that we meet these small businesses where they are that we give them the assistance they need to apply for this program, and that we give them the assistance that is so very needed, especially in communities of color. The Harris County $30 million Small Business Grant will allow small businesses in Harris County to take advantage of the opportunity to build a pathway to self-sufficiency through business ownership, to leave a legacy for their families, to provide products and services that enhance their communities. Once again, thank you, Judge Adago. Thank you, County Commissioners, for backing the backbone of this economy. I am a third generation entrepreneur, so, so I understand and I really relate to what you said. It was very, very poignant, and it really, really touched me. I get it. Lip Fund gets it. We do this every day. So we partner with Harris County to help lift small businesses in their, in their journey towards economic development and journey. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll take questions. Yeah. Yes, thank you. So um, I just want you to, so, so many of the businesses that would be uh, covered by this are business owners who didn't apply, for instance, for a PPP loan protection, in part because the guidelines weren't in line with their business structure. So 
that then created a level of distrust as far as funds in general are concerned. How do you assure those business owners that this is different, that this is something for which they can apply and they won't potentially be penalized down the road? So look, the funds obviously are limited. I wish I could say every, every business who applies is going to get support. The truth of the matter is it's a $30 million program. But more likely than not, we'll receive more applicants than we can support. But what we've created is a fair process, and we've created a process that helps support applicants as they go through it. So, no, this should not uh, keep you from applying to other funds. Um, no, this should not disadvantage you in any way. Uh, quite the opposite. We want to help applicant uh, businesses applying be successful in the program. And, and just to be very transparent about eligibility, and we'll have all this information on the website later on this month once it launches, but uh, business owners with personal income less than 80% of the average median income. So that's what we're looking at, real small, small businesses. Um, because some of these larger ones were already supported by programs such as the PPP program. Businesses have to be located and registered in Harris County. It's a Harris County program. Uh, businesses must have 30 or fewer employees, including owners. There's a focus on micro businesses and small businesses. They need to have operated before April of 2020, so operated before the start of COVID. Um, they must show that they had ne negative impact on operations due to COVID. May they must have had an annual revenue of less than a half a million dollars in 2019 and 2020. And of course, be in good standing when it comes to their taxes, et cetera. So um, it, is, it is truly a focus for the smallest of small businesses, particularly, um, you know, and incidentally ends up being some that have been overlooked by other programs. And once they are approved, uh, they are, have to give back, they have to pay back this amount, or what is going to happen? No, these funds are, are grants. They are grants, they are not loans. So businesses will receive the funds, they will use them as needed to support their business, and there will not be any kind of require them, requirement for them to then return the funds. You mentioned uh, that you're probably going to get more applicants than there is money right now, at least, to fund. Is there any intelligence as to how many businesses may potentially need this that qualify? The, the, the set of point we have is from the previous program, mm -hmm. and Commissioner Atia, it sounds like can, he can speak more to it, but, uh, you know, it was many-fold the number of applications we received compared to now. This is, you know, if folks can have a pulse on the state of the economy, the state of the need. As I mentioned, the census tells us revenue's gone down 38% for our small businesses, but we won't know until we launch the program what the kind of interest is. We can be all but sure that demand will exceed supply. Um, and, you know, we cannot, we will never have the funds to help everyone, but this is a meaningful, substantive investment that will make a big difference, and the hope is that there will be um, a ripple effect across the, the economy, across the community, from these 2,000 small businesses that will receive this support. Do you have a point to add? Yes, uh, thank you, George. Uh, yes, number one, we had approximately 14,000 businesses apply uh, for the last uh, small business grant. Out of that, uh, over 2,000 uh, applied. In the first round, 443 uh, some odd businesses received uh, the uh, the small business loan that was then converted into a grant program. And again, back then we had thousands of businesses apply. So obviously the need is out there, the pain is existent. And I would just simply uh, add to um, uh, uh, an ask of mine, uh, and that is for anyone who does receive help from Harris County, specifically from Harris County, all I ask is to pay it forward work with other small businesses uh, in the neighborhood, in the community that you, that you exist in. Support others who have maybe uh, didn't get uh, the first or second, may not even get the third uh, opportunity. But I simply ask that you can help us move uh, this economy forward by paying it forward. Can you repeat the first question about the requirements in Spanish, exactly what kind of requirements do those businesses need? Sí. Es, eh, las, las, los negocios que califican para estos fondos y, 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 y vale la pena recordar que obviamente no vamos a poder otorgar una, una beca, un, estos fondos a todos quienes apliquen, pero 30 millones de dólares es una cantidad bastante grande, va a apoyar al menos 2 mil negocios. Eh, los dueños deben tener ingresos de menos de 80% del promedio del condado. 
debe estar el negocio registrado y debe operar en el condado Harris, obviamente. El negocio de tener 30 empleados o menos debe eh, haber estado operando desde antes de abril de, del 2020, antes de la pandemia. Debe haber eh, tenido impactos negativos por el COVID-19 y los ingresos anuales del negocio deben ser de menos de medio millón de dólares, de medio millón de dólares. Obviamente debe estar en, en buen estatus con los impuestos, etc. La intención detrás de, tras de, de estos requerimientos es que es apoyar a los negocios más pequeños, a las empresas más pequeñas, las microempresas. Y dentro de estos eh, requerimientos vamos a priorizar negocios eh, donde los dueños sean minorías, sean mujeres, donde hayan ingresos aún más bajos y que estén en áreas del condado de bajos recursos. Yeah, look, I, I'm the emergency manager for the county, ultimately, and we've been through so many emergencies, and, and what I think about with this is, is a hurricane, for example. When we have a hurricane barreling toward uh, Galveston, we don't tell residents, good luck, you're on your own. We order an evacuation. As elected leaders, as uh, government leaders, we are responsible for the health and the safety of the community. And that is the responsibility that school superintendents and principals have right now when it comes to our children, to our future. And so I am supportive of Superintendent House's decision to, to require um, masks in HISD schools. I am supportive of the leaders of Dallas ISD and Austin ISD and every other leader that is standing up for our children. I, I just, it breaks my heart to picture these kids in the classrooms, 100% capacity, no mask, with a more transmissible variant. You know, kids are already required to wear certain kinds of clothes, you know, to make sure that they don't wear short skirts, to make sure that they don't expose their shoulders. We surely can ask them to wear a mask so that they can protect the health of the other kids and they can protect their own health. So I not only support these moves, I encourage them. I ask, this is a moment for each and every one of us to take steps to protect the community against this virus. Thank you. In español. Sí. Este, estoy, um, Finalmente, yo soy la directora de, de, de manejo de emergencias para el condado Harris. Y cuando hablamos acerca del requerimiento de las mascarillas en las escuelas, pienso en un huracán. Cuando viene un huracán hacia la costa de Galveston, no digo simplemente buena suerte, nos vemos. Nosotros ordenamos evacuaciones. Como gobierno, como líderes eh, de gobierno, tenemos que velar por la seguridad, por la salud de la comunidad. Y eso es lo que necesitamos hoy día por parte de los líderes de nuestros distritos escolares. Entonces, apoyo la decisión del líder House en el distrito escolar de Houston, también los líderes en Austin, en Dallas y los otros líderes en distritos escolares que están protegiendo a nuestros niños, a nuestro futuro. En, sabemos que esta variante es más transmisible, es más peligrosa. No podemos simplemente mandar a los chicos a la escuela sin mascarillas, todos eh, a 100% llenas las, las aulas. Tenemos que protegerlos. Ya hoy día uno sabe que en las escuelas no se permiten las faldas cortas, no se permite mostrar los hombros. Entonces, no es difícil decir, oiga, cúrase la, la, la boca para no transmitir ese virus. Cada uno de nosotros tenemos que tomar un pasito para proteger la comunidad. Y estos líderes eh, no solamente les agradezco, sino que también les pido que, que tomen esos pasos para proteger a nuestros niños. Thank you. Thank you.